Now I can go back and ask it to give me something unique and creative. Game. Unique and creative game to help me learn about LLMs. The previous game is too common and not really helpful for me. Okay, I'm going to create it again. It says, all right. Uh, the one thing I like about this is that it didn't give me any explanation first. It just went straight into just generating code. I like that because this is what I'm doing, right? I'm in the conversation. It understands my intent and so on. So how do you play this game? How this game is unique and more helpful. So contextual learning, instead of isolated definitions, you learn by completing sentences. This helps you understand how each concept fits into the broader context of LLMs. You need to actively recall the concept based on the sentence's meaning promoting deeper learning and better retention. So this is active recall. And then reinforcing true definitions. Even if you answer incorrectly, you immediately present it with the correct concept and its definition, reinforcing your learning. And it says engaging format. The sentence completion format is more interactive and engaging than a simple quiz. I like this. This is what I wanted, right? So it really helped the model to give it feedback. And now I'm going to run it to see if this is actually working code. Okay. Paste the code here and then say, welcome to the LLM sentence completion game. Try to fill in the blank with the correct LLM concept LLMs leverage to achieve impressive results I'm going to say attention mechanism incorrect the answer was attention okay okay it's not the same right doing a direct keyword matching I guess there's a mechanism that allows a model to focus on specific parts of an input sequence the development of blank has been a major breakthrough in the field of AI Formers? incorrect the answer was attention so a mechanism that allows a model to focus on specific parts of the input sequence LLMs leverage so I'm guessing it's just specifically asking about that I'm just going to enter that oh Okay, <laughs> then it's something else. Um, all right, it's a bit confusing the game here because I thought because it had already asked me this way, um, it was going to be the same. But it says the answer was generative pre-training, training an LLM of a lot. So it can improve. It's not so friendly. I think it can improve in terms of how it's performing it. But I think it achieves a bit more closely what I was asking it to. So like something more creative that reinforces that active recall part of the game. I really like. And the fact that it's now forcing me to think a little bit more deeper about the answer. Really like. I think this is a nice outcome. Google DeepMind just made available Gemini 1.5 Pro Experimental 0801. So today is August 1st. What we're going to do in this video is go through some examples and we're going to be taking this model for a spin and testing it on a variety of complex tasks to see how good this model is. So I'm going to read out here the announcement from the LMSYS where they have already Gemini 1.5 Pro Experimental 0801 on the arena itself and they have gathered over 12k community votes. So apparently what they say is this is a big deal because for the first time a Google Gemini model has claimed the number one spot. You can see it here with a score of 1,300 and also achieves number one on their vision leaderboard as well. So it has a lot of vision capabilities, which is something we will be testing as well as we go through the different tests that I have lined up for today. It has surpassed GPT-40 and Cloud 3.5. You can see it here, GPT-40 and Cloud 3.5. So this looks like a very, very capable model. The fact that it's number one in the arena. As with all the benchmarks, I think it's always about doing your own test and you know, not only relying on what you see with this course, but this is a community leaderboard. So I think it's still very impressive and shows it has a lot of potential. So this model in particular excels in multilingual tasks and delivers robust performance in technical areas like math, art prompts, and coding. So we are going to check those technical areas and also some coding tasks that we will be testing inside Google AI Studio. And overall, these are the rankings. So there is a number one overall ranking, as we can see here in the image. For math, it's between one and three. So those are the positions, instruction following, one and two for coding, three and five. So while it's really good at code generation, still probably lacks. I'm very curious to see how it does at some coding tasks, specifically like creative coding tasks. So let's test it out. I'm here inside the Google AI Studio. I'll be doing a couple of tests. And the first test I want to do is I'm just going to select one of the tests that I have here as a first example. So here we are going to select Gemini 1.5 Pro Experimental 0801. So we have all the other Gemini models as well as Flash and the Gemma 2 models, which we have have already tested too. So this is the one we're interested in. So let's look at this recipe to Jason. I think what's really interesting with these models, uh, they're getting really good at going from unstructured information to structured information, which is one of the most common use cases of language models. So I'm very curious to test it on a few of these type of tasks. So the first one is I'm just going to select the one that it has already. And this one shows an image, a plate of food, by the way. And it says right here, the instruction is given this image detail, the recipe to bake this item in Jason. 
JSON format include item names and quantities or the recipe. So we can see it's in JSON format. So it looks like a valid JSON format. And then it has the recipe here. Then it has the title of the recipe. It says here, roasted potatoes with chanterelles. So ingredients, one pound baby potatoes, scrub, a half pound chanterelle mushrooms, cleaned and so on. So it has, I'm not sure about this particular recipe and not familiar with it. I just wanted to see sort of the structure of the output here, which is, you know, it needs to be in JSON format as said in the instruction. It looks like it does it that way. So I'm going to continue testing on this one. I think this is a very interesting use case. So another thing that I want to try here is I want to actually test invoice to JSON. So I'm going to start a new chat. All right. So here I need to upload. I'm going to upload an invoice. So I have an invoice. Okay. I have this invoice here. And this is very common, right? But what I'm interested in particular is converting whatever information it's producing into a JSON format. So I'm going to actually query very simple like this, given this image, detail the invoice in JSON format. Okay. And I have the invoice open here. So I'm looking at specific information like billing to, ship to, uh, the amounts, and then the subtotal and subtask, and then perhaps some other information and details that it captures. So just want to see how good it captures this and how it structures it. All right, so it has an invoice number, looks correct. All right, invoice date, that looks correct as well. So all of that looks nice. Then invoice total, let me see, invoice total, where's it here? It's 154.06, so it's 154.06. And then now it does a bit of nesting, right? So it has bill to, which is nice because I haven't explicitly told it how to nest this information so far. It's just deciding on its own how to properly nest it. So here it says bill to name address bill to name and then the address ship to as well the name same John Smith and the address everything looks correct there all right that looks nice and it says items and look how it does with the items right so it has it in a list right it's like an array and then it has the objects here for each of the items here and so it has the quantities one two three apparently it used the same order one two three and then it has all the item names and then the prices everything looks good 1530 by 15 all right, that looks good. Then finally it has a subtotal, which is this 145, right? That looks okay. Then it has sales tax 9.06. So it really looks fine. And then it has this nice little addition here of this detailed information at the bottom, terms and conditions. And it says payment is due within 15 days. Then here is a line break. Please make checks payable to Is Repair Inc. Is Repair Inc. Okay, so overall, I think this is very impressive. Something I noticed here is that it ignored this part here at the top. I guess maybe it didn't find that information or completely ignored it, or maybe I'm not seeing it, but I didn't see that it provided that information in the output. But I think that's fine. I mean, it did this really well. And something to do here is to test like invoices maybe that have even more complex structure or maybe even like receipts you want to test receipts as well to see how it puts together that information i think that would be a useful personal use case to also test along the same lines here so that looks nice i mean this is a model that knows how to extract information right structured information in the right format so we're seeing it has capability to do so nice to see now what i'm going to do now is also test something on what i think is very difficult for models which is processing pdfs in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test with an archive paper. And I think you have guessed it. I'm going to use one of the most popular papers recently in the world of AI, which is attention is all you need, right? The transformer paper. I'm going to provide it and then I'm going to ask it to do certain things with this PDF. So first I need to upload it. I'm going to upload it again, upload to drive. This step is really simple. And then I'm going to provide it the paper. So it's extracting the paper. It is gathering all the information it needs and putting that into context. And now I can query it. So it has roughly about 15,000 tokens, which is nice. You can see the token count here. So this model has up to 2 million in terms of context window. So the task that I wanted to do first is I'm going to I'm not going to do question answering because I think that's very basic. I'm really interested to see how this model performs this information extraction. So in particular, I want this model to look at the document, look at this PDF and extract all the sections and subsections of the paper because, because what I ultimately want to do is take those pieces of information and maybe store them or do some further analysis with these. And in specifically, I'm asking it to export in JSON format where the heading is key, is the key, and then the number is the value because this is a JSON object. So I'm going to run this all right it's taking a bit more time that's the thing with these bigger models right so you can see here roughly about okay 10 seconds 15 seconds potentially it's what it's going to take yeah it's going to be it 
took 12 seconds to do this task. Now I'm going to look for consistency here and accuracy, right? It's really important that it gets that information correctly because I am checking to see how good it is at extracting information from a PDF. The problem lies in how this information is actually extracted and represented. So if it's represented correctly, then the model will have sufficient information to present that information in whatever format and perform any type of analysis I want it to perform. So I'm just going to look at that. So one interesting thing here is I'm going to look at the attention section because I want to see if these subheadings are correct. So that's the first thing I'm going to look. So I have the paper here. I'm going to take a look at 3.2. So that's 3. 3.2 is attention. All right, attention looks good. And then 3.21 is scale that product attention. Okay, scale that product attention. That looks good. And then multi-head attention. But notice here that, look, if you look at the instruction, it actually used the heading explicitly as the number value. So it did not use this particular number here, which is the subsection as part of the value. So maybe I can improve it. Maybe this is how it understood the task from what I can see. So that's something that maybe I can improve. I think it makes the point that you probably have to be more specific in the instructions, especially for something like this. But besides that, everything looks good. I mean, it has seven sections. It has 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. I'm going to double check that. So let me see. It has seven sections. That's nice. 6.3, 6.2, 6.1. And 6.3 is English constituency parsing. So English constituency parsing. You can see here. And it's 6.3. So 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. You can see here that it did get the subsection correct, just like in this case. But it did not get, you know, these particular numbers here correct, which is what I wanted it to do. Now, I can iterate on this, but that's not the point. I wanted to show whether it's extracting the right information and so on. So it looks like it performed the task really well. And then it has like acknowledgments, and references null. That's something that can also be improved. Maybe I want something else as a default for in case it did not find a specific number for that section. This is great. This is really nice. It's very much along the same lines of the initial task that I did where I converted a structured data to something structured. So it's very promising from what I can tell. Now I'm going to do a couple more tasks here and I want to test code generation and I also want to test for long outputs. And another thing that I want to do as well is I want to test for some math capabilities because that is something that they reported in the announcement. So I'm going to test this creative game test here. So it, it is asking the model to generate a creative Python game that helps me with learning about LLMs. I need to improve technical expertise and memorize key concepts. So what I'm testing for here is how creative it is, right? How abstract and whether it actually performs the task, right? I really want to see if it is performing the task why I wanted it. I want something creative, maybe unique, but I also I'm looking at how it generates the code as well. So I'm very curious about this. So let me run this. Okay. I already see it's using random. All right. So so it has key concepts here, all right? And it has the definitions, that's fine. Then it has a quiz function here, okay? And then it explains what it is doing. All right, run the, the Python code, say tips for learning. So run the Python code, you'll be presented with a multiple choice question about an LLM concept. Choose the correct definition by entering corresponding number one to four. The game will tell you if you're right or wrong and provide the correct answer if needed. After answering all the questions, you will see your final score. I think this is not so creative. This is a very common way of how you can maybe learn about specific concepts. I was looking more for creativity. But anyways, I do have the code here and I actually want to test this code. So I'm actually going to copy this code right away to see what it does. I just want to see that it actually works, that this is a working code. And I'm not impressed by the, again, the game, because the game, I don't think is that creative. But anyways, I'm just going to try it here. So welcome to the LLM quiz game. What is the definition of tokenization? So this is a multiple choice. Uh, I'm just going to select random here. I'm going to say two. It says incorrect. The correct answer was the process of breaking down, which is the correct answer. So what is the definition of tokenization? Then it repeats again. And then I'm just going to select the right answer this time. Correct. And then it says it jumps to another question now and it goes on and on. So, I mean, in the end, right? Right. This is nice because it is giving me working code, but I think what I expected is something more creative. And this is something that these models really struggle with. So, you know, I had the expectation that it was going to give me something more creative. Now I can go back and ask it to give me something unique and creative. Game. Unique and creative game to help me learn about LLMs. The previous game is too common and not really helpful for me. Okay, I'm going to create it again. It says, All right. Uh, the one thing I like about this is that it didn't give me any explanation first. It just went straight into just generating code. I like that because this is what I'm doing, right? I'm in the conversation. It understands my intent and so on. So how do you play this game? How this game is unique and more helpful? So contextual learning, instead of isolated definitions, you learn by completing sentences. This helps you understand how each concept fits into the broader context of LLMs. You need to actively recall the concept based on the sentence's meaning 
promoting deeper learning and better retention. So this is active recall. And then reinforcing true definitions. Even if you answer incorrectly, you immediately present it with the correct concept and its definition, reinforcing your learning. And it says engaging format. The sentence completion format is more interactive and engaging than a simple quiz. I like this. This is what I wanted, right? So it really helped the model to give it feedback. And now I'm going to run it to see if this is actually working code. Okay. Paste the code here and then say, welcome to the LLM sentence completion game. Try to fill in the blank with the correct LLM concept LLMs leverage to achieve impressive results I'm gonna say attention mechanism incorrect the answer was attention okay okay it's not the same right doing a direct keyword matching I guess there's a mechanism that allows a model to focus on specific parts of an input sequence the development of blank has been a major breakthrough in the field of AI formers incorrect the answer was attention so a mechanism that allows a model to focus on specific parts of the input sequence LLMs leverage so I'm guessing it's just specifically asking about that I'm just gonna enter that oh Okay, <laughs> then it's something else. Um, all right, it's a bit confusing the game here because I thought because it had, had already asked me this way, um, it was going to be the same. But it says the answer was generative pre-training, training an LM of a So it can improve. It's not so friendly. I think it can improve in terms of how it's performing it. But I think it achieves a bit more closely what I was asking it to. So like something more creative that reinforces that active recall part of the game I really like. And the fact that it's now forcing me to think a little bit more deeper about the answer I really like. I think this is a nice outcome of this particular task. Okay, so moving on to the math part. So I want to do one test, two tests actually for math. I'm going to do a simple math test that a lot of people have been testing on with these models recently in the community. So I'm very curious how this model performs for this particular task. Carpati says this is more like jagged intelligence where the model can perform really complex capabilities, right? Like those tasks that I just did with the creative game and so on with that feedback that I provided. But then for simple tasks such as this one, it completely fails. So I'm curious how this model performs on this particular one. So it says 9.9 .9 is bigger than 9.11. I must say all the models that we have tested so far, GPT-40, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, all of them give you 9.11 in this question. No, I'm not going to get too carried away with the result here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sample this a couple of times just to see if it actually gets this thing correct. Because most of the models always respond with 9.11, but I'm seeing that this model chooses 9.9 .9 as the answer, which is the correct answer in this case. So I'm going to delete this and then sample it again. Again, 9.9 .9 is bigger than 9.11. It chooses the right answer. Say 04, 9.9 .9 is more than 9.11 after the explanation. Now we can look at the explanation here. It says both numbers have the same whole number. Okay, decimal places different. First decimal place is a tenth place. 9.9 .9 has a 9 in the tenth place, while 9.11 has a 1 in the tenth place, which is correct. Since 9 is bigger than 1, 9.9 .9 is larger. This is the right explanation. I'm going to sample it one more time just to make sure. Again, very consistent with it, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm guessing sometimes these models, especially newer models, they get patched really quickly. And it could be that this model have seen examples of this already because this is something that all these companies would want to fix, right? Since it's a very common failure of these models. So okay, I'm just going to run it, paste it and run. And here it goes. So candle four was blown out first. It's the shortest, meaning it had the least amount of time to burn. I think that's not correct, right? The correct answer is three. So we can see that this still is a problem that these models struggle with. So that's not surprising to see. I am sure that this is something that these models will eventually get right. But as I said before, all the models always select four. So this one still fails. This is a math logic test and this model fails at this one. So I will continue to test this particular example. I actually have some variants that I'm working on this just to have a more robust testing for this particular type of problem. But you can see that it's not perfect, right? It did not get this one correct, no matter if I sample it again, just to check. Yeah, it's still just saying for just like the other models. So I'm going to end the video there. It's getting a bit long. Thank you for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, that really helps a lot. Tell me whether you're enjoying and finding value in these videos. Thank you for watching again and see you in the next one.